Thanks a lot, uh, Deepak. Uh, in fact, it's indeed a pleasure this Saturday morning to to host this uh, this panel and moderate this esteemed uh, set of panelists. A lot of them, you know, whom I have been colleagues with or shared, you know, dais and screen with. So it's uh, it's it's great and in a way surreal to to kind of been doing this this webinars in the last you know two three months. But that's the new way of life. Before I kick it off, you know, I I, I would like to start with a huge sense of uh, gratitude. You know, um, we are all privileged, you know, people out here who are speaking, who are probably, uh, you know, listening to the call. We have a roof on our head. We have a food on our plate. Uh, and this pandemic has uh, has displaced and disrupted quite a few. Yeah. Um, the United Nations uh, believes that if it's not handled well, and then by all means, you can see that it's not being handled well. And I'm not taking a dig at anyone. It's just the inexperience that we've never seen a crisis of such magnitude in our lifetimes. Uh, that we could um, potentially push about 400 million people into poverty, that we could potentially wipe out 20 to 30 years of development that we have done as a human race. Uh, that as is the challenge that we actually face today. We've all seen lots of crises, lots of disruptions. Um, most of the disruption that we have seen is something which either hits a particular industry uh, or a continent, you know, or a segment, um, so it could be a SARS, you know, which could be geographically, or Ebola, which could be geographically limited to some part of the world. It could be a financial crisis that could hit, you know, and reverberate the whole financial economy, you know, or it could be disruptions on technology displacing a few companies, you know, here and there. But we've never seen uh, something as massive, as global, and as significant as Corona in our lifetimes, which has a human, it has an economic and, you know, it has, um, it has a global, you know, impact across the world. Which one of us forecasted at the beginning of the year that crude will go negative? Uh, how many of us thought that the GDP growth uh, this year, next year of all countries, including India, uh, would go, you know, negative? Uh, how many of us, you know, ever thought that we would have uh, Olympics or uh, Tokyo, you know, or the Wimbledon, you know, cancelled for that matter? Uh, or for that matter, how many of us thought that the skies would suddenly, you know, be short of any flights and there will be a complete standstill of, um, of international travel? About 70, 75% of international travel you know, or all flights, you know, I would say there are very few flights that we're con continuing to run in the US. But barring that, um, most flights were all, you know, grounded. None of this were, you know, were forecast by us. So we are entering into, you know, into an era which is unprecedented. It is a it is a crisis. Um, I believe it's going to be temporary, but it's going to be indefinite, yeah? and it will have those characteristics. Um, and I can tell you one thing, you know, for people on the call, if you feel confused, and I, and I keep speaking to many leaders, and if you feel confused about the situation, then you have perfectly understood the situation. You know, quite often people get back and then say, "Oh my God, I am confused about the situation, so probably I am not good enough." No, that is exactly the state we are in. And as long as we acknowledge this, you know, and then move forward is probably the first start. With all these uncertainties around it, I still believe doing nothing is not a strategy. Ostrich emulation is not a strategy and we need to do something about it. And this series today, we are going to talk about specifically, you know, capital. And I have, you know, my good friends and, you know, and colleagues, you know, here to, to enlighten us on elements of you know how to preserve your capital just because we are cfos i don't want us to be myopic and i don't want any of you to judge that we are only good at you know managing the numbers you know side of the business uh, while we have a primary responsibility as functional leaders to manage the pnl and and balance sheet and the long term strategy of the company we also have a shared responsibility along with the ceo and the board to manage the long term health and performance of the company as well so I believe there are two other elements of capital that every CXO needs to pay attention, not just a CFO. And it is the human capital because there, is, there are companies uh, which obviously have employees to run them. And, and if you cannot manage your employees, you know, all this pandemic can, will one day wear off. You want them to be hale and healthy and come back you know, to become productive and, and contribute to the organization. So if you don't pay attention to the human capital at this stage, then it's going to be at your peril. And as CFOs, we need to ensure that we, we provide the right amount of resources, stimulus, and support, organizational support to, to, uh, to be able to manage that element of the capital. The next element of the capital is the social capital, which is basically nothing but the trust capital that we have as an organization. 
each one of these CFOs represent you know a strong brand name, and all of us as consumers have you know consumed their their brand with that inherent trust. Just because there is a pandemic is no excuse for us to walk away from that trust. In fact, this is exactly the time we need to reinforce that trust and build you know for it in the in the you know with our cons consumers. So that is a, a sneak preview of what's the you know what's the district discussion going to be all up to to whet your appetite so that you we can get you you know to stay engaged. Uh, I'm now going to you know hand over the baton to my to my colleagues here. Before we start on, probably I will ask each one of them to talk their top of mind for five minutes. Um, give us a sneak peek into their industry, their company, their specific challenges that they are actually facing, you know, uh, as a result of this pandemic and how they are overcoming, you know, those challenges. We will deep dive, you know, a bit more going on, but first I would like to know what's, you know, their top of mind. We will go in the order in which, you know, the slide is there. So I'd ask Anand to go, you know, go first, um, then followed by, you know, uh, Harshal and then Manas and then, Nitin and then Sanjay. Uh, so we will just take, you know, each of yours, you know, um, first five minutes. As Deepak said, uh, I think he's done a great job of, of selecting not just prolific and, and eminent speakers here, but also selecting a wide spectrum of industries from people who have got their business coming to a standstill and need to rethink almost anything and everything, you know, question every gospel to, to some companies who have been, you know, uh, comparatively less, you know, impacted. So, so that's the the lovely panel that we have actually have here. So, uh, I hand over the baton to to Anand. Anand, over to you. 